Welcome to Garden City Sunday Celebration Service. I'm Pastor Aaron, so happy to be with you. I wanna take a minute and thank you, as always, for taking the time to be with us each Sunday, or if you're watching this episode throughout the week, I pray that it continues to inspire and enrich you, and encouraging you to move towards the presence of God that is readily available to you. Whatever your need is, whatever your battle is, know that you can be a conqueror through Christ. I wanna challenge you to receive and walk in the power of his presence. That invitation is to you. I also wanna take a minute and thank you, those of you that join us consistently online, or, or if you are with us in person and then you come home and you catch this episode for a refreshment, I wanna thank you particularly for your consistent giving. I wanna invite you to visit us at gardencitychurch.net slash giving, where you can continue to submit your tithes and your offerings unto the Lord. You can be confident that we're continuing to uh, use all that has been received for the furtherance of the ministry and of the gospel. You see it, it's right there in front of you. Uh, that is our heartbeat, that is our mission. And of course, we continue to support our missionaries who are on the field and they themselves, they've been um, weathering 2020 just as many of you have. So thank you for being faithful. Let's get into today's message. I've entitled it, Come and See My Zeal. I'm gonna be reading out of 2 Kings 10, 16. The scripture is going to pop up on the screen, or you can open your Bibles and you can follow along, make some notes, circle. I know the Lord's going to speak to you today. It says, Jehu said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. Then he had him ride along in his chariot. Well, where are we when we pick up on the scripture? Because that's just a, a, a sentence. It's just barely a sentence. Where are we? Well, we're during the reign of King Jehoram. He is the son of Ahab and Jezebel. Now, here's, here's what's happening. God is getting ready to pour out judgment in the land. And there's so much to this. I only want to focus on one slice of this pie, but it's, it's really a pretty big pie. Uh, in 2 Kings chapter 9, the prophet Elisha has sent one of his servants uh, to find and anoint a man by the name of Jehu to anoint him as king. This is how kings were, were uh, set in place in these days. A prophet would typically anoint them. Jehu was sent, uh, was sent a prophet who would anoint him as the king of Israel. And this time, he is one of the captain of the armies, but he's been anointed particularly for two reasons as you read through 2 Kings uh, chapter 9 primarily verses 7 through 10, all right? So God is raising up Jehu for the purpose of crushing the wickedness in the land, primarily the idolatry. But if you remember a character by the name of Jezebel, well, this is her, and God is calling him to bring an end to her wicked, wicked rule. Now, there's a second aspect that God is raising this man up. He's raising him up because the word of the Lord must always be fulfilled. So it's in repentance or in judgment uh, where righteousness is established. God is on the, the path of establishing his righteous rule. And we want to be there to experience it. We want his righteousness. We pray for his righteousness. Let his righteousness rise up in our hearts and let his righteousness be demonstrated and plainly visible throughout the land. So I want to ask you, do you want to see the righteousness of God demonstrated in the land? Well, you know, prior to judgment and a man by the name of Jehu being raised up, the mission was to bring the people to a place of repentance. And when repentance has been denied, you can guarantee that judgment is to follow. That is why this call to the church and to the body all throughout 2020 has been a sovereign call to repent, to repent. This isn't a sovereign call to feel bad. It's to ask God to change and transform us, to order in order to see righteousness established, we have to repent. We have to turn from sin or God will judge that sin. Now, Jezebel is still in the story. Here's what we know about her. And I've mentioned this before in prior teachings. This character, Jezebel, is recognized, and I say the character of Jezebel is recognized through corruption, idolatry. Her behavior was murdering the prophets. And the prophets represent the words and the voice of the Lord speaking clarity to his people, manipulating and operating through weak leadership. So when we arrive at this passage, Jezebel's been killed and the kingdom is being purged. Jehu is on a warpath and he meets a man 
by the name of Jehonadab. And Jehonadab is going to help Jehu bring down the remaining idol worshipers, those in the land who were worshiping Baal and committing idolatry and leading others to commit idolatry. And it's in this encounter, after all of this drama, that Jehu speaks these words, come and see my zeal. Oh, come and see my zeal. Now listen, at this point of the story, if you choose to go back and look at it, it's a pretty gruesome story, okay? But I believe that it's wildly important that we take times when we reflect on the violence in the story because of the violence that you and I are experiencing in the land. There's violence right now in our day and age. Uh, we are seeing physical violence, but there's spiritual violence. There's mental and emotional uh, violence that's happening right now. We know babies are continually being murdered. And there's so much unrest in the streets. And with this upcoming election in just a couple of days, we're, on a watch, we're indeed watching uh, uh, not just political powers fight things out, but I believe this is a manifestation of a spiritual conflict as well. Do you realize there's still violence in the land? Oh, don't, don't bury your heads in the sand and think in just a few days things are going to change and be over. There's violence. And righteousness must rear its head. And in Jehu's life, this violence is a demonstration of zeal for God for the purpose of crushing idolatry in the land. We need men and women in our land that are ready to demonstrate a mighty zeal for God. I'm not talking about coming out and committing violent acts. No, we're not talking about that. God isn't raising people up today as he did in those days to do acts of violence. That's not the call. That's not the path. That is not what God is uh, uh, leading the church to do right now. He's causing us and calling us into spiritual war. Where are those who will stand up and say, see my zeal for the Lord? Maybe you're watching right now and your heart's beginning to stir and you say, I, I need a zeal for God. I want to talk to you about zeal. Come and see. Come and experience my zeal for God. Your assignment from God will grant you a vision and that vision can be sustained through zeal. Let, let me say that again so you can catch that. God has an assignment for you. God's going to grant you a vision regarding that assignment. And that assignment is always going to be sustained through zeal. You might say, I have a vision, but I don't have any zeal. I would help myself, but I'm just not feeling like it. You, you know what you ought to do, but you're lacking the zeal. You're lacking the passion. There's no motivation. Here's how zeal is defined. Passionate ardor in the pursuit of anything. Zeal is eagerness. It's desire to accomplish or obtain. I, I think you understand what zeal is. It's a fire that burns within you. It's the fuel in the tank to keep you moving and keep you motivated. At 2020, we're trying to rob you of zeal and passion and make you ask the question, why am I even bothering? Is it really worth it? Jehu is an example that zeal leads to the manifestation or what we would call the realization of vision. Zeal leads to the manifestation of the call. It's always birthed from the heart of God, not the heart of man. If you're trying to pursue your godly ordained purpose in your own terms, I've talked to so many students in the last several weeks that are quitting school, leaders that are stepping down, churches that are closing, people that are leaving church, some people are genuinely being led of God and we bless them, but there's many more that are throwing in the towel because they've tried to sustain a zeal and passion and ardor in their own power, their own ability. You can't do it. You can't do it. You need a God-ordained vision to keep the fire burning. Jehu was a captain of the army when the prophet meets him. He lived in a normal life in a very corrupt system. Now, Jehu's not an ordinary man. Um, he had significance in his blood. How exactly, it's not quite clear. But what we do know is that when this man comes storming the palace, he, he's a man of reputation and people take note. And they say, that must be Jehu riding like a wild man. So they know about Jehu. So let's talk about some zeal. Let's hone in on this passage today, okay? We need zeal. 
Would you agree? Even if you feel like you're passionate for life, passionate people want more passion. And so uh, we need zeal introduced into our lives. For Jehu, it came through the anointing. Many of us are not zealous or passionate for God because we're not walking in the anointing. Now, I want to talk to you briefly about anointing. I'm going to, I'm going to draw from Exodus 30, 30, and then Psalms 133, 2. I'm going to put those scriptures up so you can see them. And I just want to talk to you briefly about anointing before I move over or move forward. Uh, when we talk about anointing, a lot of times we, we think we're talking about something very mystical or something that's just kind of around, just some ambient presence. That's not anointing. And don't confuse the Holy Spirit for anointing. I spent some time trying to understand what is this anointing. And, and I, I, I'm not the last word in anointing, but I just want to share with you what I've drawn based on ex Exodus 30, 30 and Psalms 133, 2. When we encounter the priests in Exodus 30, God is ordaining and commanding Aaron to go and anoint his children priests. They've been called priests. Now go and anoint them. Go and anoint them. So you see that they're called to a duty, a task, or an office, and God is commanding now go through the process to ratify and make significant this thing that I've called them to. And thus, the oil is poured on their head, okay? Now here's the thing about anointing. If I poured oil all over your head, as Psalms 133 talks about, that that the anointing runs from the top of the head of Aaron through his beard. It, it saturates. Uh, today, when we anoint people, we have these little vials, as the New Testament commands us to anoint somebody with oil. It's not common practice to pour a whole gallon of oil on somebody and ruin their church clothing. Uh, so typically, we just dab a little oil. Now, there's nothing mystical to the oil. It's oil. I could pour it on somebody, I could pour it on my salad, uh, but it's the obedience. It is the act of obedience that unlocks the miracle. It's the act of obedience. Don't you know that obedience always unlocks miracles? And so God calls us to do something that is going to remain. And through the act of obedience, there is a residue upon my life. And I believe that too many believers, there's no residue. There's no evidence that you've been in the presence of the Lord. I wonder if you got into God's presence until the anointing began to run from the top down through the bottom. You become lethal like Jehu for the kingdom of God. From Jehu, this anointing, this zeal, it was spread and encouraged to Jehonadab. The zeal was encouraged through earlier the kindred of spirit. It was a kindred spirit that he had. Our hearts entwined, Jehu asked Jehonadab. And how is zeal working its way in you? Are you being drained? Are you being discouraged? Or are you being encouraged to zeal? Are you surrounded by gossip and destructive language and assumptions and conversations and relationships that influence and rob you of the peace that God wants you to have? Is it keeping you tossing and turning? Listen, here's what Hebrews 10 24 says. It says, and let us consider how we, we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. That's part of passing on the zeal spur one another on get into conversations and relationships quit talking about what the devil's doing and start talking about what God is doing quit talking about all the failures and the flaws and how things are messed up and start talking about how everything is going right by faith don't deny the reality but recognize that every problem that you're facing is not the end of the story every challenge is just the uh, is just the end of one chapter that's going to lead to the next chapter. It's not over till it's over, and it's not over in Jesus' name. So begin to spur people on. Encourage the anointing. Be a light. Be a presence uh, of hope in their life. The second thing I want to talk to you about is that zeal is demonstrative. For Jehu and Jehonadab, this demonstration meant war. The zeal of the Lord leads to action. And sometimes violent action. Again, I'm not advocating physical violence. I, I'm not telling anybody to get out there and get in a fight or do something destructive. But Matthew 11:10 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom 
of heaven has been treated with contempt or with violence and the violent take it by force. Have you heard that passage before? It's saying that people of violence, people of passion, people of zeal are trying to lay hold of the kingdom because this is what what the, the drive does to lay hold of the kingdom. There's, there's been a heavenly war and God is calling the church to rise up and seize and lay hold of the kingdom of God and let the kingdom of God be demonstrated. Don't you know the kingdom of God is demonstrated through love and through peace. We have the fruit of the spirit to really begin to measure out now how people of God are carrying themselves. We're not out there on chariots and wielding swords. We're wielding the sword of the spirit, which is the word of of God is your zeal demonstrative is your zeal uh, giving you the passion and the ardor you need to stand and fight fight the temptation fight the the things the enemy are trying to do fight for your family fight for your peace keep standing in Jesus name thirdly the zeal for God will take you to new places oh <laughs> Zeal will take you to new levels. For Jehonadab, it meant stepping into a chariot and riding with a king. Now, zeal, in order for that to happen, it must be kindred. If you want to go to the next level, you got to surround yourself with people who are of the same spirit. Some of you, you're dealing with people that are not of the same spirit. and You're wondering why you feel stuck. Some of you are even consorting with demonic powers and you don't even realize it. And you wonder why you feel stuck. Some of you think the activities and the things that are of the world that you're engaging in are, are just liberty. My friend, it's not liberty, it's called bondage because you think you can stop whenever you want to, but you find that you never really want to stop. God wants to deliver you, call you out of bondage. It's got to be a kindredness in order to be taken to the next level. The zeal of the Lord will meet you where you are, like Jehu on the chariot meeting Jehonadab and saying, man, are we of the same spirit? Come and see my passion. Come and see my zeal. The zeal of the Lord will meet you where you're at and transport you to a king's destination. Hallelujah. Do you feel stuck? Do you feel stagnant? Is there a lack of passion in your life? You feel like you're walking in victory? We need to passionately fall in love with Jesus once again. Oh, how you and I, we need to passionately, zealously fall in love with Jesus. This is the only way to break the cycle and move on to the next dimension where God's presence is waiting. The next level anointing is waiting. We need the zeal and passion for God. We need to fall in love with him once again. I want to read to you out of 1 Corinthians. It says, however, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and what no mind is capable of conceiving, there are things which God has prepared for those who love him. You don't know what the next level is yet. Oh my God, don't limit him. Don't limit him. Don't limit the destination that he's looking to take you. Don't limit the destination that he's calling you to, the next level. 2020 is about taking on the next level. Let the zeal of the Lord infiltrate your life. Let me ask you now. You feel drained? You feel like the zeal is lacking? I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you that the zeal of the Lord will infiltrate your life and that you'll begin to walk with a new ardor, a new passion, all that. There would be a passion that would rise up even now. We're just a couple of days away from election. You ought not be shaken, afraid, uh, anxious. No, you ought to be in your closet, passionate for Jesus. Passionate, ready for the next level anointing to infiltrate your life. For the anointing of God to break the yoke of bondage. Come and see my zeal. When's the last time you've ever had the boldness to tell somebody, come and see my passion for the Lord. Come and experience the passion of the Lord. Come to church and experience the presence and the power and the passion for God. 
I'm going to pray for you that God would stir a flame in your heart today that you begin to walk in the next level of zeal for him. Would you pray with me right now? If you'd say, Pastor Aaron, I want that zeal burning in my life once again. I need a passion. I feel stagnant and cold. I don't feel any passion. Pastor Aaron, is there something wrong with me? I'm going to pray for you right now. Just raise your hand right now. I know you might be with people. You might be driving. Keep your hand on the wheel. Uh, you might be riding a bike. Okay, don't take your hands off. But you, you, if you're able to lift your hand right now, raise your hand and say, Jesus, I need a passion for you. I need a zeal that others would be able to see that others would be able to experience, Lord, that my life would open the door to an experience that others would experience. Oh, God, I'm never going to quit beating the drum of the experience that you bring, God. You can bring the joy and the peace and the hope in the lives of so many. God, I ask you, pour it out in the name of Jesus. Pour it out in the name of Jesus. Set people free today. Let the anointing break the yoke of bondage even now in Jesus' name. Be free. Be free in Jesus' name. Come and see my zeal. He's saying, come and experience my zeal. I want to encourage you to tell somebody, come and experience my zeal for God. I'm going to start worshiping him. I I need to open my Bible. Let that zeal be demonstrated. I'm going to start praying with a whole new fervor. I believe that as you begin to walk by faith, go after the things of God, that a fire is going to start stirring in your heart like never before, that others will see the demonstration of the anointing in your life. Praise God. Listen, if you would like to reach out to me, if you need more encouragement, if you want to connect, if you just need somebody to pray with you, I invite you to connect with me at pastor at gardencitychurch.net. I'm always available. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I believe that you can can even begin to send some miracles. God's doing miracles. I'm believing it. Come and see my zeal. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you now as we close. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his glory. Be blessing and honor and power unto his name forevermore. Amen and amen. Pastor Aaron, thank you for spending some time with me. Have an awesome week. God bless you.